Hello guys, my name is Dave, I'm a colorist from Switzerland. Welcome to my color grading suite. Today's look breakdown is a music video I did recently and this is the final look. The song is called E.T. Before I show you my look development, it needs context. The plot of the song talk about the superficiality and inauthentic behavior of people. For example, how they present themselves in social media, how happy they are, how great they are, etc. But it's also about how she's ready to leave our planet in hopes someone beams her away because she feels like she doesn't belong here. The full length of the video is in the description below. My job as a colorist is to tell story through moods and colors. Since she feels to not belong here, I chose to make the surrounding of her to feel strange and a little bit surreal. Thanks to the huge color contrast between her and the surrounding, it reinforced the impression that she's not belong here. So let's dive into the process. So how did I set up my project? I color managed the whole project in DaVinci White Gamut and this is how I did it. Group preclip, I changed the, with the color space transform node from Sony camera to Ari. White gamut, why I did that is because I have a better roll off in the highlights and this benefits me for this particular project because she's dressed in white. Then from Ari with the second node, I went to Da Vinci white gamut. So pretty simple. Then in the group post clip, this one I switch on later. I had so I did some color adjustment to fin to finesse the look, and here I changed from Da Vinci White Gamma to my display Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. What I did with the look designer while testing around what is the best starting point for this particular look I want to create, it was the Fuji 8503 Gen 2. That's why I chose the look designer. So we go back to the clip and now I start grading. In the offset I chose the HDR global wheel instead of the primaries because during the test phase and uh, experimenting the look I had better result working with the global adjustment in the HDR mode. So let's go. I brighten up the image quite a bit. Now I go a little bit darker like that. And then in the next note, in the contrast note, I pump the contrast a lot, but not in the HDR mode. This is a mistake for this particular look. I went here and changed it here quite a bit because I had better result. and then with the pivot point I change the middle gray and lower it down quite a bit. So now I have a pretty rich image. I like to work with a lot of, such, of saturation first and contrast so I see some color issues maybe or skin tone issue or white balance issue. I get better resolve because I see more. So now I play it through. It looks good. So we went from this to this. Then on the next note, I created the look. So in the HDR mode, I went with the offset and I dialed in this bluish that I was talking about before to make the surrounding to feel really, really strange. So I go down, oops, here, like that, not much. 88 it's good and then I change the angle here to 5 so I got the hue that I really want before and after and now it looks a little bit surreal then with the next note <clears throat> I finessed the look because for the director it felt a little bit too blue on the suit so we had the idea that we implement with the gain wheel in the primaries down here a little bit of warmth so we have a little bit more color contrast 
and the suit don't get that blue. So I go here and I put some yellow red in it like that and now before and after you see that the suit feels more naturally because important for us is that the surrounding feels strange and not her. Let's check. It looks good. So the director, Luki Frieden, was sitting in my color grading suite and he liked the concept, but it was too much contrast for his taste. And I agreed on him that it felt really, really heavy, the music video, if I kept it contrast-wise like that. So in the feedback note, I went to my log wheel and in the shadows, we pumped up quite a bit the black level so it feels more open so before and after now if you watch it it feels like it is flat but at the end it will not be that flat because we made some adjustment to improve that now i focus on the viewer's eye where should the viewer look at so now because her dress is so bright we focus on her shoulder and her hand and not on her face so with some kind of mask masking i optimize that so now here with the gain wheel i dial it down this brighter part maybe like that i did something like that and then i copy the mask and i paste the mask and then with the second mask I want to reshape the whole image like that so I darken down the left part of the image so we really focus on her I show you the before and after before and after before and after and you really see that now we focus on her and not anymore on the surrounding and that's the whole point of using masks to focus the viewer's eye so then to the group post clip just to understand what the warper node did i zoom in after and before and after so why I did that so for me and for the director it the concept was nice of the look but leaving like that we don't have that much of color separation in the background so now it looks nice because it's green but we don't have any depth because everything has the same greenish tone of course here and maybe here we have some var variation but the, but we have just pretty much one hue and I changed it with the warper so now in the first glance it looks a little bit strange but that is the whole point it looks strange and also interesting because now we have more greenish tone more saturation variation in the background and that creates the look really special for this music video instead of this video-ish greeny standard look so put interesting for the viewer with color separation with different hues and different saturations how i did that let's figure it out so what i did <clears throat> is that i changed the reddish tones to orangey you see that in a minute why i did that and then everything that was blue went to cyan some cyan tones into blue and all the greens a little bit towards cyan but the most important part are these dots here these dots here represent the less saturated foliage in the background so like this one here and this is important i kept the color more or less like it was and everything else I cool it down or I desaturate it or bend it and this is why this image looks so interesting because if I didn't do that then everything is like 
cyan again or has the same power of saturation. So with this variation, I really was able to create this special look. So since I made a very good base, now I can just copy paste the base. So I middle click it, middle click the reference and middle click here. You see this one here, it's very overexposed, but I show you in a minute how I managed to make it look great. Now I start always with the most obvious mistakes. So these are the mask. Let's zoom in. Yes, I don't need that mask, but this one is good, but on the wrong place. So now I push this up a little bit down so we don't focus on her knees, but on the ground and feet. Something like that. I loop it. This looks good. I have the impression that this one has more saturation than the next one. So to my hero shot. Yes. And it lacks also on contrast. I don't change anything here. I keep all the basic notes the same. When I make adjustment, I have a separate note for that. I decrease the saturation overall. And now I increase the contrast to make it darker and punchier like the other one. And now it looks good. I even go with the offset wheel in the adjustment note and I dial in some bluish tones, not green, some kind of that. And even desaturate it even more. And now when I play it through, it looks good. Yes. So before the adjustment and with the adjustment. So I make it darker by increasing the contrast for this particular shot and I put some blue in it and I desaturated the whole image so it fits this the next shot yes perfect this one here looks good but I remember that the director didn't like this monochromish greenish tones overall because here we have some orangey brownish tones from the from the foliage but they have too much green in it so what i did in the adjustment layer i just went with the color temperature and i warmed up the image a little bit something like that i hope you see that on youtube so before and after before and after so we have the same concept like we have here that we have some brownish tones and the same here. Now the masks, let's check it out. What I need is darken the upper parts because it is too bright. It, it catches too much of attention. So I go to the mask here, invert it, and then the highlight, it gets darker. So we are starting to manipulate the viewer's eye we go a step further and then here we go like that so the white dress stands out and we focus already on her so without the mask you don't know where to look at because it's so bright and now it's obvious that you look on her very good so this is the most complicated one, but the most fun. So this one I don't need for the moment, the masks. Let's put it out. I like the way the backgrounds look like. It has the perfect exposure, but she's too bright compared to the other images. Plus it lacks of depth in the image. So I correct all this stuff. Before I do it, let's check the group post clip. Because before I said that I changed the red hues to orangey and now look at her skin if i disable it 
So from the Sony Color Science mixed with uh, Fuji film print stock that I used, for my taste, the skin tone is too red. And if I change these minor tweaks, it looks very beautiful. Yellowish, it has some red in it and not only just one color. I make some secondary adjustments here in the parallel nodes. So I started with a mask, of course because if I don't use a mask and I make everything darker, then the background goes really without structure. So it's like crushed and I don't, and I don't like that. So now I track it. I'm pretty happy with that. I go to the inside softness, outside softness. Let's go. I go darker, maybe like that I put some contrast in it let's do it like that so before and after looks really good then I want to create some depth in the image and I do that again with the mask so I increase the size change the aspect ratio, change the rotation, maybe again the size and the aspect ratio again, something like that. And then I go intentionally in her face a little bit over the nose and over the lips. Why? Because then we create some depth even in the face and her eye stands out and we want that the viewers looks at her eyes. So now I soften the image and now I go darker. That's nice. And then with, with the color temperature, I increase the warm so it doesn't get too blue. Before and after, we have a very interesting image because it has so much even if she's lying on the ground, we have so much depth because we create so much shadows and brightness at the same time. Now the eyes are really the focus of the whole thing. So now I'm going to track it like that. And now we treat her eyes. Again, a mask, change the size the aspect ratio, the rotation, aspect ratio again, the size again, the softness, the aspect ratio again, and the size, something like that. And now, I don't know if on YouTube you will see that, but with the mid-tone detail, I increase the texture. There are some several ways how to increase texture, but I chose the most easiest, the most fastest and the most effective one for this particular shot. And this is with mid-tone detail, around 31. Before and after, before and after. It's a huge difference. We go even further with the gamma wheel down here. I increase the brightness so we really focus on her oops I didn't track it that's why it looks strange yeah before and after before and after so we increase the texture we increase a little bit the brightness and now we increase the saturation of her eyes. So with the curves, hue versus sat, I go to the blues, really crank up the blues and the cyan too. And now look at this. So now her eyes are really popping out. Before overall, of course, and now this. The last shot. So this shot here, as you see, it's not color managed and it's not even grouped. Why? Because I didn't know what camera they used 
it is a stock footage of, of course but i didn't know what camera they used which log profile so i said to the director you know what we just grade it so i it took me a couple of notes so i just increase the saturation the contrast again something like that then i increase the saturation down here like that then on the next note with the curve with the hue with the sad the same concept like for the eyes i increase the blue the cyan and the yellow parts and then with the hue versus hue curve because i don't like this blue let's check it yeah i don't like that i change the hue and change it to cyan let's check that looks good before and after so i kept it really really simple maybe i have to decrease a little bit of saturation in the strong blue maybe like that and on the last note i put some mid-tone detail to increase the texture so it looks more punchy before and after before and after And this is the final look. So the director's feedback was during the grade, yeah, you know what, we have um, overall too much saturation. So without, it is like that. I don't know if you see much of a difference, but without YouTube compression, it's really there and it creates even more color separation. Also here, without saturation treatment, with saturation treatment, yeah, the skin tone looks way better. Here I explained everything. Also here in the group post clip with the hue versus sat and with the key output of 50%, so like an opacity of 50%, we decreased the orangey, yellow and greenish tone to really finesse the final look. This is it guys, thank you very much for your attention, subscribe and be ready for the next look breakdown next week. Like I always say, focus always on story and keep it simple.